The Hail Mary prayer is a prayer that we first derive from scripture. So the first words of it, Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with you, come from Gabriel's words to Mary at the event we call the Annunciation. So when Gabriel appeared to her to tell her, hey, you're gonna have a kid, he's gonna be great. Uh, He's gonna be the savior. So from the Catholic perspective, what is prayer and how does it relate to our prior conversation on the Catholic spiritual life? Prayer is relationship with God, communication with God, interaction with God, engagement with God. So prayer is the way that, is the name for our communication with God. So it it can be taken in a certain amount, a certain broad sense of how we understand that and the ways that we can communicate with God. We always want to hold in our mind and heart that it also has to have a more strict sense of those things that we do, whether we, uh, they could be observed by someone or not. Because um, certainly mental prayer and, and praying without speaking or doing something is entirely possible, and we all know that. Um, but that prayer as the direct things we do with God always has to be held primary. How does it relate to our prior conversation about spirituality? Spiritualities like Ignatian or Benedictine are meant to teach us how to pray. So we all know that we can pray and and sometimes we see the the beauty of the way that that children will pray just intuitively and um and and Jesus speaks of this and uh but we also know that we just like we need to learn how to be in relationship with other people we need to learn how to be in relationship with God um and what that relationship is meant to be like so that's the relationship to the spiritualities is they're meant to teach us about how to pray, what to expect in prayer, and what to do with what is in fact happening um, in our prayer time. So what types of prayer are common for Catholics? Um, the reason why I ask is because I was once with a, a group of Catholic friends and they asked me to pray before a meal. Um, and so I did and I just did it the way that I prayed growing up in my my Protestant household, just kind of with my own words. Um, And after I did that, some of the people there, uh, their reaction made it seem like they uh, are not used to that. They're much more um, used to reciting prayers rather than people praying in their own words. Um, So apologies if this is a completely ignorant question, but is it is it common for Catholics to pray in their own words? I think it's a good question. It's not um, a, an ignorant one. I think it's a great question. I think Catholics are more accustomed, perhaps especially than, than, than Protestants, to praying w- using words given to us or using recited prayers, um, so to speak, and, and much more comfortable with that, like prayers before meals, all Catholics pretty much know the same prayer before meals that's been around a long time. I don't know how long, uh, much longer than either of our lifetimes, but, um, but all Catholics know that prayer. And in a group of Catholics from all over the country or English speaking world, we can all pray that prayer together. Um, which sometimes for us is part of the beauty of the way that Catholics pray is because our, our mass um, is the same mass anywhere. We can go to mass in any country, in any language, and at, even if we don't know any of the words, we still know uh, what's happening at Mass. Um, but we are, it does mean also that Catholics are more comfortable with, with ritual, with the familiarity of recited prayer, and don't tend to be as comfortable with praying in their own words or praying more extemporaneously. Um, Catholics do it, certainly. Um, plenty of Catholics do. It's not just a thing that priests do, but uh, plenty of other Catholics do as well. Um, pray in... Uh, uh, in our own words. So for us, prayer is, can be a lot of different things from um, praying out loud, praying mentally, praying with scripture, a lot of different ways that Catholics will pray. So what is that prayer that everybody prays before a meal that I didn't know? Bless us, O Lord, and these thy gifts, which we are about to receive from thy bounty through Christ our Lord. Amen. All right. 
So tying back into our conversation on sacramentals, one Catholic practice that Protestants often object to is praying the rosary. So could you maybe explain what praying the rosary is for people who don't know, um, but then also address the, the common Protestant objection, um, scriptural objection. I think it's in Matthew, uh, a warning against vain repetition in prayer. That's a great question because the rosary really is a thing that uh, is known by almost every Catholic, if not every Catholic, and um, that Catholics are very uh, are very fond of. And it's it began. It has a slow evolution. So it it didn't just like someone started doing this thing and called it the rosary. Um, it has a long and uh, kind of slow evolution over time. That it began in the in the monasteries of the um, of the early church that the monks wanting to pray without ceasing prayed all 150 psalms every day. Awesome. <laughs> That's great, great for them. Um, and uh, the lay faithful wanted to, to pray with them, but because of their, uh, the world in which they lived, they, they had jobs and kids and a family and, um, and all the rest, they couldn't pray all 150 psalms every day. And over time, the rosary developed as one way of, uh, of doing that. So it's, it's structured around um, mysteries, we call them, mysteries of the life of Jesus Christ. So from, his, uh, from the Annunciation, where he was conceived in the womb of the Virgin, to his birth, to some of the mysteries of uh, his public ministry, uh, to his death and resurrection, um, to meditate on while we pray uh, the, the Hail Mary prayer time and again. So we pray them like 10 at a time. And in theory, there are 15 of them uh, in all. So 100, 150. Um, so it's a, a way of, uh, of meditating by repetition. So we understand um, Matthew's injunction against, or Jesus' injunction in the Gospel of Matthew against vain repetition, not to mean avoid all repetition, because he qualifies his word by saying vain repetition and speaking of the, the pagans who think they will be heard because of their many words. Um, and so we believe it's, it's not uh, that Jesus commands us never to do, to repeat things, um, but rather that the repetition isn't, for us, it's not we will be heard because we've said it enough times. The repetition is a, a mode of meditation on the mystery that we're meditating on as we're praying that same Hail Mary prayer over and over. It's a way to just uh, slow things down and engage in the meditation of the mystery of the life of Christ. So if I'm hearing you right, let me repeat back to you what I think I'm hearing you say, and then you can tell me if I'm not understanding it correctly. Um, so the, the, you take the scriptural warning against vain repetition really in the sense that you're not supposed to repeat yourself a bunch of times so that God will hear you. You're saying that's not the Catholic approach to praying the rosary. God hears you the first time. You're repeating yourself more as uh, God working on you or you slowing yourself down in prayer. Um, it's not doing more to earn favor with God, I think maybe is, is what I'm hearing you say. So maybe let me know if that's right, but then also talk a little bit about, you mentioned that you're praying the Hail Mary prayer. So you're praying that prayer 150 times as you go around the beads, and what is the Hail Mary prayer? A great couple of questions. The first, I think you have understood, uh, you've understood me well that yes, we take the vain repetition to be, uh, I'm repeating oneself over and over so that God will hear us. We, I, I think actually you said it uh, really well. God heard me the first time, but is continuing to work on me. Like God's always laboring to love us. Um, and our repetition of the Hail Mary prayer is more about God continuing to work on us, us slowing down enough to receive what God wants to do, and slowing down enough to pay attention to, um, again, the mysteries of the life of Christ that, that we're meditating on. So it, 
it's for us it's about god heard us the first time and he already knows what we need and we know that and we're not praying as though he needs to hear me enough to to get it or to to hear it or or something like that um, but rather that god is continuing to work on me even if he's already spoken and he has already spoken but he's continuing to work his labor of love in us the hail mary prayer is a prayer that we first derive from scripture so the first words of it hail mary full of grace the lord is with you come from gabriel's words to mary at the event we call the annunciation so when gabriel appeared to her to tell her hey you're gonna have a kid he's gonna be great uh he's gonna be the savior um full of grace the lord is with you blessed are you among women these are the words of her cousin elizabeth uh, and blessed is the fruit of your womb jesus again still basically the words of elizabeth we add jesus to the words that elizabeth speaks to mary in their encounter so again that encounter where mary goes to visit her cousin john the baptist in the womb leaps for joy the second part of the prayer is a little more what we kind of think of as prayer pray for us mother of god uh, now and at the hour of our death so it's just asking her like pray for us you're a saint you're in heaven you're the mother of the savior like please pray for us uh we need her intercession and for us that is simply the same as asking for anyone else's um, intercession it just functions a little bit differently because mary is in heaven and we we aren't uh and so it, how we do it functions a little bit differently but that's the prayer part that we're asking for her intercession and her prayers for us so when somebody's praying the rosary it sounds like at least part of it is is prayers directed to mary right are are all of the prayers directed to mary or is it a mixture some of them are prayers to mary some of them are, are prayers to god directly it's a mix of things again the rosary developed over a long period of time and so it it picked up different prayers over time um it, it, i'm not sure the, like if there's a nice way to say this or not the easiest way is just to google how to pray the rosary and look it, look it up and you'll find a, a thousand things that will tell you how to how to pray and what what all those prayers um, are the short answer is yes there are a set of prayers like the our father um, or the glory be that are prayers more, more directly to god and then there are other prayers like the hail mary that we that we spoke about already um, where it's a bit of a bit of scripture and a bit of asking for mary's intercession so the prayer is a little more uh, directed to um, to saint mary and asking for her to to pray for us so these prayers to mary lead into the the last topic that i wanted to ask you about um, catholic practices of praying to mary and to the saints are such big topics that we we don't really have time to dive deep into them here um, but they're really important i mean i don't think we can have uh, a full conversation on catholic prayer without bringing up the topic right so um, if i just open up the topic to you generally here at the end and and just ask you to comment what would you want protestants like me who have serious concerns about these practices what would you want protestants to know about catholic prayers to mary and prayers to the saints as catholics we believe in the communion of the saints that all of those who god uh, has saved who god is saving are united in the church the the body of christ and that death doesn't separate us from that communion uh, of all those who uh, who believe in Jesus Christ, who are who are baptized in His name. So for us, uh, prayers to the saints are fundamentally just about the same thing as asking another Catholic or Christian for prayers for us, asking them to to intercede for us. It takes a different form because the saint isn't on earth they're they're dead we believe them to be um, to be united with god in in heaven and so the the way that we ask for their intercession is going to be different but we understand praying to the saints as having uh, that first 
intercession, fundamental purpose. So it's asking them to pray for us. We don't believe the saints themselves to be sources of grace or that the saints are our God in, in some way. That's not what we believe. Um, but rather that like all Christians, um, like all Catholics, they're called to intercede for others, to ask for God to, uh, to bless, to take care of his people, much the way that God makes the intercession of people on earth uh, effective or, or efficacious, um, so too with the saints. The second purpose of it for Catholics is to develop friendship with the saints. Um, that again, we believe in the communion of the saints and we believe that um, in a really robust kind of way that we can develop a friendship with someone in heaven, uh, with one of the saints who's in, who's in heaven. Again, that friendship is going to look different than friendships on earth and, um, and such, but we believe it to be possible and even desirable to develop a, a friendship with someone who's in heaven, who, because they're a saint, um, or we've, we've recognized them as one, uh, can be for us a, a guide and an example of how to live the, the Christian life. 